Root crop staples that form an integral part of the daily menu of Ghanaians are cassava, yam, and to an extent sweet potatoes. To ensure food security, these must be available in sufficient quantities all year round. Unfortunately, inappropriate agricultural practices and sometimes ignorance on the part of indigenous farmers conspire to undermine the attainment of food security. The Root and Tuber Improvement and Marketing Program, RTIMP, of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture identified many of these challenges in selected communities around the country and through research and cooperation from farmers, proffered solutions that have not only made the farmers happy, but setting the nation on the path of food security. For administrative purposes, RTIMP has broken down Ghana into three agricultural zones, Upper East, Upper West, Northern, and the northern part of the Volta region constitute Zone 1. Zone 2 comprises Bunahafu, Ashanti, and the northern part of the western region, while the eastern, central, and parts of the western and Volta regions constitute Zone 3. In all these zones, our temp deals with farmers' groups. One such group, Asuntaba Yam Farmers Group, located at Abujum in the Kintampo South District of the Bunahafu region, was selected in Zone 2. It is made up of 23 males and 17 females. The following are the challenges observed in its farming practices. Farmers planted large yam sets. They planted in big yam mounds. They believed that fertilized yams do not taste well. Yam mounds were widely spaced. Time of planting was between November and January, and yields were not encouraging. Our team's intervention to dispel these came in the form of a farmer's field fora FFF. They acquired land at Abujum and divided it into three plots, one for the farmer practice, another for the participatory action research PAR, and the third as an integrated crop management ICM plot. This was for the researchers. It is on this that most of the agroecological survey analysis was to be done. The power plot was subdivided into three. One portion was for the application of fertilizer NPK 151515. Foliar fertilizer Alwin was applied to the second, with the third being the controlled plot. On the farmer practice plot, they mounted their own way, but on the ICM and power plots, they were made to mount one meter by one meter. It was realized that the number of mounts on the ICM and power plots was more than those on the farmer practice plot. The reason being that those of the farmers were bigger. But at the end of the experiment, the farmers learned that it was not the size of the mound that determines the yield. <laughs> Enti ama bara no so bo akase ya kura san chen ye de no ama emu adon no so kura san bo ayen ano sa na wura na ji asase ni nyina bara no wura na ji asase ni nyina kata so a wura ntimi fifira se we mounted closer and they were smaller but theirs were at a wider spacing and bigger at harvest time they realized that big uh, bigger mounds do not necessarily produce bigger tubers Time of planting was another revelation. The farmers were used to planting between December and January, but this was done in April. The harvest from this experiment dispelled the norm of the farmers, giving them more latitude for the cultivation of yam. You can crop yam twice in a season and still make something out of it. And by so doing, in fact, you, you are helping in what 
uh, in contributing to food security. Tamwa, you did a bar and bar a boy, no, not a boy, I don't need to ask you. A young yak, I did a queer for a yadik, I buy a dear brain a cheap. I know, and to me, I must have, and to a one, and you who said by a oak or do by a mere empty me paho. The forum also broke the notion that yams taste best when cultivated without fertilizer. I ever two by a no severe yano. Oh, my no abbey. Now, oh, my God, that you change my mammy and son. No more cock on one wire. Oh, my dear, I had a new year cock. I know I say a mamma be num di way. Anna, mass num, be a ye bindi. We do way out, we said doing. 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 Coffee no a hono. And the anoni. Ah, Mose mu the fertilizer gua and yet then. When so I must say anon a toss me no. And also na yadi a drone a goo and swim the goo spray machine at the board na a ha hino. And also ni and also na mose a toss me no. And as near Mose anona a chat for crano, and in your young far fertilizer and cancura. And tina a disya ye disya I mean ye besuan hano. Near FP free moon, someone where they would be by the one Mokai. Before the field forum, farmers also held the notion that fertilizer treated yam had a shorter shelf life. The painstaking evidential experiment involving them erased that notion. Tubers were picked from the par, foliage treated, and the controlled plots. These were all treated with fungicide and insecticide. For about the next three, four months, what was uh, treated, and especially with the fertilizer and the NPK, they even lasted even longer. Following the RTIMP interventions, the farmers group also uses small yam sets for planting, plants yams in small amounts, and plants them twice a year. Knowledge acquired from the FFF was transferred to group farms and individual farms. Other farmers were introduced to the knowledge acquired from the FFF. Farmers now plant twice a year. The group has opened an account with the Kintampo Rural Bank and revenue from their farm will be paid into it. Our team also supported farmers in the construction of yam storage barns. This became necessary due to the fact that for years on end, yam was not properly stored, reducing their shelf life. The National Board for Small Scale Industries, NBSSI, is one of the partner institutions helping our team to achieve its program objective. It was brought on board to give business development services training to the farmers. Periodically, they visit the farmers to assess their needs and offer tailor-made solutions. One major observation was that the farmers, apart from not keeping records, did not see their vocation as a business. We offer them management training programs like uh, records keeping, credit management, and how to manage a grain business, and etc. Planting material for propagating yam is hard to come by, so Mofa introduced the local farmers to a new way of getting them. Milking, pricking, or first harvesting must precede the process of getting the planting material. This is done between four and five months after sprouting. The farmer has to carefully remove the soil from around the tuber in such a way that the roots are not destroyed. He then skillfully separates the yam from the apical. It does it so carefully that the fresh of the tuber is not attached to that apical portion. Because if the fresh gets to attach the apical portion, the area is going to, is, is going to rot. There is a line there. And then they separate the tuber, the main tuber, from the apical portion through that line. And this process of milking, the idea behind it is to get a regenerated uh, yam. That is very good for planting. A future, a young farmer in Asante Mampo, also a secondary multiplier, is one of the beneficiaries. <laughs> Ma who say we any say ya by yam pono jeze ubenye bia me busua ube tongue yesia sa bed we ye owe. Bedbiaso bayreno a hane hano 
sa 